OK, let's spend a few minutes thinking about cross price elasticity of demand. And here's our question for this video. Examine two determinants of cross price elasticity of demand. Now, the word uh, examine is a command word in the question, and that does require you to include some evaluative comment. Examine, for example, is a different command word to the word explain. So let's work through a couple of answers here. Start with the definition. Cross price elasticity measures the responsiveness of demand for X in response to a change in the price of a related good, in this case, good Y. Now, one determinant of XED or cross price elasticity is whether goods are substitutes or complements. For example, substitutes have a positive cross price elasticity, whereas complements are products with a negative cross price elasticity of demand. Let's take an example of two substitutes. If the price of natural gas goes up, uh, we would expect to see an increase in the demand for renewable sources of energy, such as solar and wind and tidal. This is because the two products are substitutes. They are alternative competitive forms of energy. And uh, this will be caused by a substitution effect. For example, consumers might switch to the relatively low priced energy. A good example recently has been with the world price of natural gas going up. Uh, quite a few consumers have tried to buy off grid energy solutions, including solar panels. However, and here's the evaluation this depends on, good evaluative phrase there, this depends on the cost of substitution. Uh, oftentimes, switching energy sources involve substantial cost, expense and time delays. In this situation, the cross price elasticity demand for renewable energy would be positive, but with a low coefficient of, let's say, less than 1. 1.2 would be low in elastic. A second determinant of cross price elasticity is the strength of brand loyalty for a particular product. Consider, as an example, different brands competing in the market for sports nutrition drinks. Now, in theory, if the price of one drink goes up, then we would expect to see an increase in demand for a rival drink. A substitution effect would take place. Uh, and if brand loyalty is weak and consumers regard the drinks as pretty similar as close substitutes, then we'd expect the cross price elasticity of demand, XED, to be highly positive, say plus 2.5. A 10% increase in the price of one drink might lead to a 25% increase in the demand for a rival brand. However, evaluation coming up. In this type of market, drink manufacturers often spend heavily on marketing and advertising, and the effect can be to increase brand loyalty. And in this way, if brand loyalty is strong, consumers become less price sensitive because they're particularly attached to their favourite type of drink. In this situation, the cross price of assisted demand will therefore fall. It'll still be positive, but the coefficient won't be as high. However, again, evaluation, many people do question the effectiveness of advertising spending. If two firms are both spending heavily on marketing, advertising and other different types of promotion, well, then the effects might simply cancel each other out. Good examples of substitutes are shown here on the diagram. Uh, the examples here, carbonated drinks, games consoles, smartphones, different brands of pizza. Substitutes are in competitive demand. The fall in the price of one product will lead to a fall in demand for a substitute. Now, some products have a high positive cross price elasticity. They are close substitutes with low brand loyalty and very low costs of switching. In our left-hand diagram here, we have a strong substitute relationship. If the price of good T goes up, we see a big rise in the quantity demanded of good V, a rival brand. However, on the right-hand side, if the price of good T rises from P1 to P2, there's only a small increase in the quantity demanded of V, suggesting the two products have a weak substitute relationship. And complements are goods in joint demand. They have a negative cross price elasticity, smartphones and apps, hot dogs and buns, nacho chips and salsa dip and, one, and other products that often bought together, such as razors and shaving oils. 
In this situation, if the price of razors goes down, you'd expect the demand for shaving foam and shaving oils to rise as well. And here's on the left-hand side, it's a strong complementary relationship. If the price of X goes down, there's a big increase in demand for Y. Whereas on the right-hand side, uh, a fall in the price of X would only lead to a relatively small change in the quantity demanded of Y. So there we go, two determinants of cross-price elasticity of demand.